Hi, welcome back from the break. We are talking about the foundations of a healthy congregation. And in this session, the previous session, we talked about a, a leader or the leader that influences people. In this session, we're talking about uh, the plan or a plan that is based on the Word of God. Plan that is based on Scripture. Every church needs a plan. And you will see when we, when we go through this, you will see the need for a plan. People need and they also want to know what is the next step to get where we are going. What is the next step that I've got to take in this church, in this congregation? to get where we are going. And that is important for all of us, for you as a pastor, as a leader, for your leadership, and also for the assembly. It is it's essential to have a vision that everybody shares and is focused on. And everybody knows where we are going and how we're we going to get there and what it is we want to achieve now there's no one plan that fits all and i also understand that there is no plan that any assembly congregation in in the world is using that is so absolutely unique that it hasn't been used before or or are used by somebody else also. so i'm going to talk about the plan the need for a plan and, and why it is important and then i'm going to explain to you our assembly's plan and how we how we work and help our people to understand what is the next step you are more than welcome to implement it you are welcome to think about it to talk about it maybe change some things um, and also while well, you're welcome to sit down and work out your own plan for your specific assembly in their specific culture and in their specific surroundings so that so that they can move forward we need a plan without a plan we move in circles we don't get get nowhere and, and and we we will not finish where we want to uh, if you haven't got plan um, somebody else will give you their plan and maybe it's one of your members or the church board you as a leader need to understand i need to have a plan and i've got i've got to buy into that plan first and then get my leaders to buy into that plan get the people to buy into that plan and then we can move forward the question that i ask is where are you going to be when you get where you are going where are you going to be when you get where you're going it is like you know, some people just walk, but they they're going nowhere slowly. I think there was a program on the TV once like that. Going nowhere slowly. You just you just do things. Whatever comes to mind, I do. Without a plan, without knowing where I'm going to be at the end, where I'm going to to be. Um, in five years time or ten years time without understanding we are going somewhere so the question is also how are you going to get there I mean you know it's, it's good good and well to say I, I want people to get to a specific place and in our context people we want people to be spiritually mature, mature. but if you just say that 
that's fine. We know we're going. We, we're all working to spiritual maturity. But how do we get there? What are we going to do to get our people to become spiritually mature, to start to grow, and to to be part of this process? We must ask the question: What are they going to look like uh, in in ten years' time? What do I want my church? members to look like what what is the ultimate where where are we going it is great to say we want them to look like jesus that's wonderful i i i i applaud you for that but how are you going to get there how are you going to help them to get we we need to understand as a, as a pastor, as a leader, you need to understand, and also your church board, your leaders, need to understand there are certain groups that form part of your church's ministry, your community. They form part of the people that you minister to. And the first group is is the community. The, the community that you minister to, that is... That is in, in your whole area, the community that you reach. Now, for some, it might be 10, 20, 30 kilometers. For some, it's even further than that. For some, it's only 5 kilometers or 10 or maybe maybe 2, 2.5 two kilometers. It doesn't matter, but that's, that is your community. And we must understand that in that community, there are safe people. And in that community, there are also unsafe people. So how do you minister to the community, the safe people, and then also the community, the unsafe people? But then you've also got in your church old members. Now, that's not old in age, but they've been part of the assembly for a long time. And they are all at different levels of spiritual growth. And you must ask yourself, I've got old members and some of them know God, really know him well and they love him and they walk with him. They do all the great stuff with him. But you've also got old members that don't know God. They are there. Maybe a husband or a wife of somebody that is really serving knows God, but they, they haven't given their lives to him. They haven't decided to walk with him and, and do everything right. We all know that you've got old members. That's part of the old, not the old people, but they've been there a long time or longish time. So, you know they're there. And then lastly, we've got new members. And we've got a lot of new members that know God, that come into the church and they want to be part of the body. They want to, to be with you and your assembly. They, they say, this is my spiritual home. I want to be there. And then you've got new members that don't know God. So all of these people are the people that you serve, that you minister to. What's your plan for them? What do you want to achieve with these groups, these three groups? And how are you going to do it? What is it that you want your members to become? Just think a minute. You, you've, got, you've got all these people. You've got your church members, people that say, I'm a part of this, all these people that you serve and minister to. What do you want them to become? I want you to just this an opening on your, on, on, your, on your notes. Just put it in there. Just say, okay, this is what I want my members to become.
So you've you've written down what you want them to become. The next question I want to ask is, do you have a plan to make people part of your congregation, to equip them and send them out? Do you have a plan to get them to where you want them to go? You, you, you wrote down that it doesn't matter what you wrote down, what you want them to become. The, the, well, there's supposed to be a, a scripture there somewhere. The Bible says this is where we want to go to, spiritual maturity, being like Christ, or whatever. You want them, you want your people to get to a specific place. So do you have a plan to, from the community, to the old members, to the new members, Make them part of your church, equip them, and then send them out. Do you have a specific plan? Have you, have you, did you sit down, write something on paper so that you can understand this is where I am going with them? Do you have a verse in the Bible, a, a scripture in the Bible that, that stands out for you in in talking to you what what verse in the in the word of god is driving you and your assembly because we need that word you see when 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 i hold fast to that word in my life i understand where i'm going this is what is driving me this is what is helping me to get up in the morning and work this whole day so that I can make a difference in people's lives. This Bible verse, this, 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 maybe even a, 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 a few verses in the Bible that speaks to you. And, and, and when you speak those words, verses into the lives of your people, they, they start to get the picture to understand this is where we are going. See, a lot of us are going nowhere slowly because we do not have a plan we are going nowhere and we are going to end up nowhere just like this little car all rusted up going nowhere going nowhere slowly so let's talk about a plan i said to you that i'm going to, to talk about our plan in, in our assembly, uh, just to explain it to you in broad terms, to understand what it is so that you can have a sort of a, a picture. And as I said, you can use it or you can uh, change it, you can adjust it, or you can, well, develop your own plan. Maybe there's something else that you want to do, some other plan that you are using. The, the important thing is we must have a plan and we must we must help our people to understand what is the next step. Andy Stanley said, everybody ends up somewhere in life. A few people end up somewhere on purpose. And that is what we want to do. We want to end up somewhere on purpose. We want to get to that place with our people on purpose not just by luck or just by going on and that is exactly where you will end nowhere if you do not plan it let's look at this verse colossians 1 verse 28 to 29 this is my verse my personal verse and it is also the verse that drives where we are going as an assembly but not the only verse but this is my personal verse him we proclaim colossians 1 28 to 29 him we proclaim warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in christ for this i toil struggling with all his energy that he powerfully 
works within me. You see, this this verse it it helps me to understand that I really do need Him. I I want to do something, and I want to do it with everyone. Now the those three groups, the community, old members and new members, everyone, and I want to do something with them. And I want to help them. To be mature in Christ. That's where we are going to. Maturity in Christ. And then I understand something very, very special about this whole thing. I cannot do it in my own power. I need His energy. That He powerfully works within me. Without Him, I cannot do it. So, I set myself out, I proclaim him, I warn, I teach with all wisdom that, that I may present everyone in the community and in my church, old members, new members, mature in Christ. That is what I want to do. That is what I strive for. This is the verse that drives us. The other verse that you all know that also drives us is Matthew 22 verse 37 to 40. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the great and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So we understand there is a love for the Lord, your God, and we also understand there is a love for my neighbor. The slogan in our assembly says, live love, lieber liefde. So we live our love for God and we live our love for our neighbors. This is the two verses, these two verses drive the plan that we have in our assembly. So, what is our dream? You might call it a vision. Where are we going? And we call it in our church, in our assembly, we call it our dream. We say it. We dream about you. We have a dream about you. We talk to them and when we do our new members class, I sit down and say, I tell the people, we dream a dream for you. As an assembly, we have a dream for you that is born from the Spirit, from the Scripture, from the Bible. It is, it is born out of the heart of God. And, and when we talk to them, we tell it to them. When I, when I, when I preach uh, uh, in, in church on Sundays, you, you must vision is something that must be casted and, and, and over and over and over. You must over and over remind your people this is our vision. So so I constantly tell people our dream for you ons droom for you is geestelike volwassene. Jy geestelik volwasse in Christus. You spiritually mature in Christ. That is what we dream. That is what you would call our vision. So our vision statement, our dream statement, is you spiritually mature in Christ. And that is what we dream for every person. That is where we are going to, that is where we want to end up with that spiritually mature people in Christ. Our mission, the how do we get there? We, we, we talk to people, when, 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 I, when I speak to people, I say, this is our dream. This is our dream for you, to be spiritually mature in Christ. That's where you want to take your people to. You, you wrote down your own 
statement there in, in, in the papers to say, this is what I want them to be. I want them to be spiritually mature in Christ. The question is, how are we going to get there? What are we going to do to, to get them there so that, so that they can change, so that they can grow spiritually to spiritual maturity? And I say to them, how do we get there? It's a very simple thing that we should do. Each and every one of us, every day, should. So our, our mission, how do we get to spiritual maturity, is to live love. Your, your spiritual maturity is expressed by your growing love for God and your growing love for people. And I usually tell the people, I say to them, listen, if you, if you, if you see in your own heart and, and you feel that your, that your love for God is, is cooling down, you must understand it. You are growing spiritually backwards, backwards growing. You are, you are losing something. Spiral, spiritual maturity is expressed by a growing love for God and a growing love for people. So as, as long as my love is growing, I am growing. Because love is something that I do not just say, it's not just an expression, but it is something that I really love. So, so we say, our vision is you spiritual mature in Christ. How do we get there? We live love. And then we ask this question, how do we help you to do this? What do we do to help you to get to spiritual maturity? What do we do to help you to, to make it practical? With other words, what is your strategy? What is, what is our plan? And we say, okay, we, we want you to be spiritually mature. And we say, the way to get to spiritual maturity is by living love. Really living, living your love for the Father, for Jesus and for the Holy Spirit. But also living love for your neighbor, for people. All those people, the, the community, the old members and the new members. Living love towards them and living love towards God. Living it, not just saying it, but expressing it by the way we commit ourselves, by the way we do things, by the way we handle things. So we say to people, okay, this is good. This is fine. You understand now. We want to get spiritually mature. That is where we are on our way to spiritual maturity. Now we say, how do we get there? We've got to live love. We've got to, so we live love. Okay, that's fine. But how are we going to help you to get there? To spiritual maturity. And this is where our strategy or a plan comes into being. And we say, how do we do it as an assembly? As, as an assembly, and we do it with our new, new members class. When people, and also when I revise the vision, not revise or I speak about the vision um, with people at least once a year, the whole vision as a whole, and through the years, a lot of times about vision, I speak about this and I tell people, this is, this is how we make it practical. We say, we are there to create spaces where people live love. If we say people need to, to grow spiritually to maturity, the way to do it is to live love. Then our task as an assembly is to create spaces where people can live love. Where they can live love towards God and they can live love towards other people. So we say, okay, this is what we do. We create these spaces where you can grow. How do we know we are winning? I mean, I, I, I've said we want people to grow spiritually. We want them to grow in love. 
how what what do we do as an assembly how do we know people are growing because spiritual growth is a is a, a very difficult thing to measure you you will remember that we said our task as an assembly is to create spaces for people to live love so how do we know people are living love and how do we know they are growing we say our win is so we say that we win when people commit and take part in active small groups where they live love with the people around them with that that people in their group and when they start a ministry where they live a ministry they discover and they do ministry ministry is living love that is how people live love so so we also know that a small group a small group is a place where people apply the word they apply the things that the word teach us about fellowship koinonia in their ministry they apply their spiritual gifts their, their the giftings that the father gave them his dream for them they they start to live this and as they live their ministry they grow spiritually they grow closer to god but they also grow in their love for god and their love for people they do love they live love and that is an important place for us so if if we look at this picture you say okay our dream for you our dream for you in this in this church this assembly of ours is to be spiritually mature how are you going to do that you do it by living love so what are we going to do to help you we are going to create spaces where you can live love and if we do that how are we going to know that we are winning we know that we are winning when you become part of an active small group and when you start your ministry you do your ministry so that is that is what we do but, but this is this is the broad picture that we give people to understand who we are what we are and where we are going so this is our spiritual growth model we want people to grow but we need to to give them a picture we need to help them to understand what is my next step what is my next step in this process you see if people do not know where to go to next they they won't know what to do and a plan put on paper doesn't mean anything this whole whole thing about what is our dream for you you must live love you must you must um get to a place in a small group or start to minister that's the place where you live your ministry that's how we know we are winning the more people in small groups the more people in ministry says they are actively working on growth they are actively working on living love and if they are actively working on living love they grow they grow spiritually they grow in their spiritual lives uh, with with all the things that we teach in 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 the church in on sundays and in words words uh, schools and everything like that they there's a lot of input in their lives but they've got to get to output that's that's where you learn really to love your, your love expressed to god and expressed to people in small groups and in ministry so we make it practical and i'm going to explain it to you now with a picture it's in the, in your papers and you can have a look at it and, and you can make notes what, whatever you want to just want to to say this to you get a plan so read and keep it simple as simple as possible so what does our 
spiritual growth model looks like. Now, you can have a look with me. We say the first point that we do is the, the, the contact point, the connect point. It is this one. And, and our connection, the connect point, it takes place in our gatherings on a Sunday or in a cell group or a, or a bridge building um, a, a ministry that we have when we, we do things that that's make it easy for people to invite people to come to church or in ministries, doesn't matter. It's that contact, that, that contact point, that connection point. And, and basically, usually it's the assembly on a Sunday morning where people come together and they, they as, as a people, they react to his presence. That's what we do there. So that is the first step. That's we usually we tell people, you've, you've only you've only given the first step in this whole process. You've only taken one step. That is number one. That's what you did. You've got to go to the second step. That is number two. And in, in that is the, 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 the place where people start to belong. And that is, we call it first step. Okay. Yes, the three, first step. That is our new members class, or we talk about uh, a, a, a partnership class, uh, a vernote by Jankons. Ons noem dit vernote in partnership, in the context of partnership, well, it's just my, my idea that uh, the word expresses more what we become, not just members, you know, like I'm a paying member and I've got some, you know, some rights and stuff. It is a partnership where we take hands together and we do this, this whole thing we do together. So, and that is, that is becoming a part of something great. So that is the start. We, we, you, you come to church and then you go to uh, first step. That is our new members class where we talk about these things that I've talked about now, vision and who we are and what we are. I explained this whole diagram to them how it works i explain to them exactly this is where you are now so I, I i tell new members and i say to them this is where you are now so what is the next step they must understand what is the next step and it should be easy so we tell them the next step that you've got to go through the next one number three is the growth step this one the growth step You've got to start to grow now. And where do we do that? We do that in our small groups. So we, we tell people, you should be part of a small group. And because when in a small group is the place where you get connected. You get connected to people. That's where you make friends. That's where you get the place where people minister to you. Where you can also minister to them. Where you are served by by shepherds, where people look at you, they help you, they guide you. They are people that are trained to do that. And then we tell them the fourth step that you've got to take is the is the step of service. That is to to serve other people, and you serve other people through your ministry. And and we we tell them it is important to understand that each one have a ministry. There's no one person that do not have a ministry. And we, and we expressly tell them, listen, you've got to minister. That, that is important. And then we tell them, now, now you go, now we tell you, we are a missionary church, a missional church. That means you go. And you go into the marketplace and you invest yourself and you invite people to the first step that is the step of connection so this whole this whole thing keeps on going around and around and around so you grow through this whole thing step one two three four you go out you invest and you invite and you make sure that the next goes to contact 
you invite them to church you make sure they go to first step the, the new members class you help them to find a small group you help them to minister and you tell them you go what what do we have now now we have mentors we have people who are investing themselves in other people so it is a totally a total process it is a total process where we help people to get from one place to another we say you come in you are from the community maybe you're an old member and maybe you're a new member okay the first thing that we want you to do is we want to get you in church that's the first step we want to minister to you and we do everything that we can to get you there and get you to come back so now we start to minister to then we invite you we invite these people to a to a class that we say this is our partnership class it takes place on a specific day and if you want to be part of our assembly if you want to be part of who we are and, and you want to know where we are going and why and how and what 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 you should do you should be in this membership class you should attend it you cannot become a member if you do not attend it because then you will not understand what is the next step so this is the second step and we say come we want to see you then when I, when i get them in 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 our uh, class in that, in that session where i talk to them i explain the whole process to them and i tell them the next step that you've got to take in your spiritual growth path the next step you've got to be part of a small group and we we give them the small group leaders numbers and we tell them and we've got people specifically going to them and say listen have you are you part of a, uh, a, a small group uh, can i give you a name maybe i can invite you to my small group we do that constantly with that that's our focus we because we want people to get to a place where they can live love we create spaces where people live love and and that is one of them a small group and then we tell them we also we also don't want you just to become part of a small group we want you to discover your ministry and when you've discovered your ministry we want you to live that ministry so we find it that some people that would come to me and, and, and ask me pastor now i'm new in the assembly i i want to you know i i've got this this is my calling this is this is what i understand maybe they come from another assembly where they've already had ministry maybe they knew but they've they've already they've got this feeling or this calling to 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 do a specific sort of ministry and then we guide them and we help them into a ministry we we, we get them in contact with ministry leaders and they get them to be part of that ministry but we also have uh, twice a year a ministry weekend in the ministry weekend what i do in at, in ministry weekend is i take people take them from not understanding who they are and what they are to a place where they understand we call it we call it the toolbox we we we, we tell them what is it we ask them what is in your toolbox because in your toolbox are all the things that you need to to live your ministry your calling because God has provided you with everything you need to minister everything you need so that is what we tell them and and, and what I do at and in, in that session it's a it's two days a Friday and a Saturday morning I talk to them about who they are their personality who they are I, I talk to them about spiritual gift we give them a questionnaire they fill it in and they find out what are their spiritual gifts then I talk to them about their passion their heart how what what is driving them their their experiences they had in life it's a lot of things that we put together and then we say okay now you understand all these things they form you they make they are they that they, they that is what is your makeup so these things form you to be in a specific ministry and then we help them we give them a paper with all the ministries in church in the assembly and we say okay this is what we do read through them 
and maybe you will find something according to the plan and the toolbox that you've got you feel that you might find a place there and then you can do that ministry go into that ministry go and live that ministry go for it so we we guide people into that into that process and then we help them to live their ministry and make sure that they live their ministry so our whole focus if you look at this picture it it also explains the same if you look at this picture we say that first step that first step okay and we show this to them and and they understand this you are going that way okay so first step is the the gathering the, 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 when we get together on Sunday, then it's foundations, what we do in our membership class. Then we, you, we want you to be part of a small group. We encourage them to be part of a small group. And then we encourage them to find their ministry. Then we ask them to go, go into the marketplace. And the marketplace is the place where you live, where you work, where you do all the things that you do outside of church. And invest yourself in this marketplace and invite people to the gathering and that might be any any gathering that we have so we say what should we do we should get to a place where we take them in where we teach them where we equip them and then where we send them out and this is the question i want to ask you do you have a plan for this? If you want to really get your people to get where you want them to go, you've got to have a plan. Otherwise, you will just arrive on Sundays and preach, go home, maybe some other time have a meeting, Go and visit people. Wednesday I have a meeting of some sort. Maybe you have small groups with your small group. And then next Sunday you go to church. And then just to sort of, you know, get some sort of a variety, you get somebody else to come and preach some other time. Maybe you get somebody to come and sing a song at church. And then, you know, well, that's basically what you do year after year. I will tell you this, I will guarantee it. You are not going anywhere. You are just going through the motions of church. You are not productive and you will not be productive. You've got to know where you are going and you've got to know how to take your people from being community, from being an old member or a new member to a specific place where God wants them to be. If you do not plan it, if you do not put it on paper, and if you do not explain it and explain people the next step, you won't make it. We won't make it. So I urge you, I really urge you to, to sit down and look at what, what I've told you. Look at the papers. Look, You've got the notes there. Go through it. Ask yourself, what is what is our vision? What 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 do we what do we want people to be? And 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 again, I say again, please keep it simple, as simple as possible. Our dream for our people is you spiritually mature in Christ. That's that. Yay, geestelik volwasse in Christus. That's our dream for our people. How do we get there? Live love. Live lift. lifter. How, how simple can it be? Just live love. And we will help you. We will create spaces where you can do that. In ministry and in cell group and in our Sunday gatherings and in every other prayer meeting where we get together. We create spaces where you can live your love for God. And you can live your love for people. And in doing that, you will grow. You will grow. That is what we tell people. And we know it. We've seen it. We've experienced it. And we know what the Bible teaches. 
So we help people to love, really love God and really love people. Part of this that we do, and I end off with that. Part of what we do is a uh, we've got we've got a discipleship course that we do with people. It's 22 weeks. They come once a week. We teach, and then we tell them, "You become a mentor. You get somebody, someone. You need to get somebody that you do this whole course with, and you keep on going with that. So you teach." The moment you start to teach one on one with other with another person, you grow. You really, really grow. So I urge you, I urge you, get your plans together, put things in place where you help your people to get where you want them to go. Otherwise, they will go where they want to go. And that might not always be the place where God wants them to go. Teach them, take them by hand, and help them. And I know you will, and I know you're going to be successful in what you do. In our next session, we are going to talk about preaching that makes a difference. Look forward to that.